This is Sandy Missouri from Balloon Utopia, Market with Balloons, and today I am interviewing Blenda Barrier from, Blenda, what's your company name? Balloon and Event Construction Company. Balloon and Event Construction Company, awesome. And where are you from? What, what uh, area do you service? We service Northeast Florida and we are located in Jacksonville, Florida. Great. And um, just so we have everything here right in the very beginning, if somebody were to want to come and check out your website, where would they go? Balloonandevents.com. Great. Oh, what a what a great uh, what a great URL name you got there. You must have had it for a while. Yes. So speaking of which, uh, what year did you start? How long have you been doing this? We started in two thousand one. Um, is when we started. Um, balloon Construction Company. Nice. And um, so you, you service the North uh, Florida area. And um, what what services do you offer? I mean, what is the full scope of your company? We are primarily a balloon decorator. We started as a balloon decorator, and we have added up lighting and fabric draping and decor to accent our balloons and to help um, offer our customers a little bit more. Great. But primarily balloons. Okay. And um, what uh, credentials, accolades, uh, bragging rights do you have? We um, started um, in 2001 and as soon as I realized there was a world of balloons I immediately went to a balloon convention and learned that there was a certification program so I immediately became certified through the Qualtechs program so I'm a certified balloon artist and then after um, seeing these great things that you can make with balloons I immediately entered some of our local parades and so every year that we entered a parade float we won wow. um, best overall or first first place and it was really exciting and as far as competition goes that would be the um, awards that we have won nice and uh, let's let's talk about some of your events um, what would you say looking back over over uh, your time in business what would you say is the most interesting or memorable event that you've ever done definitely the most memorable would be doing a 10,000 balloon release for the Jacksonville Jaguars um, halftime show during their 9-11 tribute. So it had been 10 years after 9-11 and they wanted to do something spectacular during their halftime show and they hired us and trusted our company to produce that halftime portion of their show. So that was very exciting, lots of adrenaline. We were on cue and had to make it um, happen and it was pretty exciting. Were there any were there any um, challenges with doing that event? There were several challenges. The biggest challenge was t in order to have ten thousand balloons on the field, we were uh, given volunteers to help us um, bring the balloons out on the on the field. And working with volunteers was a little bit of a challenge, and to have them trust them to get the balloons out, and um, it worked. We were flexible. We made it work, um, but other than that, it was it was pretty pretty flawless. And how quickly did you have to get everything moved out onto the field from not being on the field? Oh, it was a matter of minutes. We were we were lined up and ready to go as soon as that last play ended and halftime started. We were marching on the field, so we were we were ready to go. And then there were several songs, and there was you know the production and at the end of the song and we were we were waiting for a cue and then the balloons went off. So it was exciting. And and did you have to get any sort of uh, special permissions or permits or anything for a release that large? Um, for our actually was able to work with the um, I think it's the IBA, the International Balloon Association and we um, they helped me with the um, understanding our Florida statute and what it was and since we were using 100% um, biodegradable balloons Qualtex actually provided me with the statement from their um, specialist that can verify that they are 100% so I had that as well as the statute as long as we could provide the, from the manufacturer we were um, in 
regulation, and they all needed to be hand tied um, as well, and that's what we did. So we used 100% biodegradable balloon as well as um, hand tied. So they were safe, and we were able to produce the correct paperwork that we needed to make sure we were with the Florida statute. Did you have to? Did you have to notify the FAA or anything like that? We did not. We did not. Wow, you guys, you guys are lucky out there. Out here in San Diego, our whole town is pretty much a flight zone, so <laughs> we have lots of restrictions on height and everything else. Well, and to think back, that was a big deal as to the queue because we there was a flyover involved and skydivers coming down, and they wanted we had to make sure the last skydiver was on the ground before the balloons went up. But other than that, it was all timed and everybody that was involved was aware of it. Wow, so so it sounds like this wasn't just coming and blowing up some balloons, but there was a great deal of research and thought that went into the logistics of it. There was, and it, it was fun, and, it was, it, and it's always exciting whenever everything happens and it's over with, and it's, it was a great show. They were pleased. And how overwhelming was it being out there, down on the field with a packed house like that? Yeah, it was exciting. Actually, we started out the year before. We started out with 3,000 of 3,000 balloon release, and then they doubled it the next time, and they did 6,000, and then for 9-11, they did 10,000. So um, we, we had ex great experience before we... Um, and, and it was just... It was the same each time. It was exciting. Wow. And... How long did it take you to prep it? Uh, not with not not um, doing the paperwork or the logistics, but just simply the the prep of you know setting up the bags and blowing up the balloons and all of that. Well, each time it got a little bit easier because we had started out with three thousand, so we had some you know we had it worked out. It was um, you know we would arrive for one o'clock. It was a one o'clock kickoff, so halftime may have been at let's say two thirty. And we were there probably by 8 or 9 in the morning to make sure that it was set for each one, even though we had more balloons, but we were able to to facilitate a little bit quicker because we knew what we were getting into. Wow. How much helium does 10,000 balloons take? Oh, uh, let's see. I'd have to go back and do a little bit of math. Actually, I, I actually had more helium there than I needed. Um, but it was it was a great deal of tanks. I have I have pictures of it of all the tanks lined up. Wow. So did you bring all the tanks yourself or did you have your your um, your distributor uh -huh. drop them off for you? I, I mean I'm just this sounds like an incredibly complicated event although on the surface somebody would just go oh yeah it's just balloons going up in the air. Yeah we did. I met the distributor there and showed them where to place them and the, he basically we put them off the truck and we tied them and secured them and the Jaguars approved it, and we made sure that we were safe, and the distributor just delivered them there and then picked them up the next day. So it was good. So we had several teams going. We had several tanks going at one time and several bags that we were filling. Wow. Wow, what, what an incredible event, and how lucky the Jaguars were to have you. Yeah, it was exciting. And they're still my customer today. We're not doing too great, but we have an event lined up for them in October. Well, maybe you can bring them some luck. Yes. Nice. So, so um, you said that you also offer uh, some some other um, accessory products and services. Um, what what kind of events do you find yourself doing the most of? A couple of years ago, I realized who who my client was, and it was a big awe moment for my business. And my number one client is event planners. And it's really exciting because they are working with the customer. They know what they can expect from me. And I actually have, it's, it's just easier. I love working with event planners. They know what they can, they can order it. I'm going to be there and it works. So um, what was, so that our primary event is corporate work with event planners, um, nonprofit work with event planners, um, with production companies where they facilitate the whole event and we they sub us for balloons. We have several companies here in Jacksonville that we work with that they trust us with their balloons. Uh, and it was it was 
a big light whenever I realized exactly who my primary customer is. It was it was it was good to know that. So so most of your most of your clients and most of your events tend to be um, more corporate kind of event planner events rather than uh, maybe weddings or bar mit bar mitzvahs or something like that. Correct. Now in in the big production company here in Jacksonville, they do plan a great deal of weddings, which would be the very small end of our work. We don't do, but they do do a lot of bar and bat mitzvahs, and they would use us for their balloons. Nice. Nice. And um, what kind of events would you say that you enjoy the most? Truly classic decor, actually. Just just being able to to do it. I, I also enjoy it. I also do a lot of work with schools. I do a lot of homecomings, a lot of proms, and when the sponsor or instructors can give me a budget and trust me to do it, and I go and do the work. So I'd say that that's my favorite, um, being able to do that. But I also just like the classic decor because there's a little bit less thought process that goes into it. And um what about uh, events that you really prefer not to do? Uh, bearing in mind that we all we all take you know whatever jobs come in because you know what can we do? That's our that's our business. But if you had your druthers, what kind of job would you just prefer not to do? I'll give you an aspect of a job. I am not a centerpiece person. I, it takes too long to put that much thought into centerpieces. I do it. I do it on a regular basis. But if I had a choice. That's the part that I would eliminate. Mm -hmm. And um, what uh, if there was one event that you could just go back and do over? What event would it be, and what would you do differently? Oh, that's a hard question. I have, in the very beginning of my business, I did. Um, I have a lot of car dealerships that I work with. And um, if I could go back after the economy kind of dropped, and some of the car dealerships stopped using our services, I wish I would have been proactive and stayed on top of um, offering them my services because I've had some um, competitors out of state or across the state come in and because they were there and solicited that work, they have that work. So I wish that if I could go back and redo it again, I would um, make sure that that customer knew that I was still here and still had my services because they were never dissatisfied. They just didn't have the um, budget to offer balloons in their showrooms. And now that the economy has come around for car sales, they have brought them back into their showrooms. So more of a marketing do-over than an event do-over. Exactly. Yes. Nice. Um, event do-over. Oh, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Okay, yeah, if you have a, you know, a disaster story or, you know, just one where it's uh, probably, I would guess, probably an event early in your career, um, one that, you know, you just, was a great learning experience <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but that's right, you can, you know, think about that and get back to me if you think of anything. Um, so in this, uh, you know, talking about... Um, you know your your general events and your most interesting events and and your products and services. Is there anything else that I should know? Do you have any other stories you want to share with me before we get to the next section? I don't think so. No. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about um, about the school events. Um, so so your school events you're generally booked not through the planner but directly through the schools, right? Correct. And what about what about the nonprofit events? Do those also tend to be direct bookings? Actually, it's it's fifty fifty. It, it's just if if some of the event production companies have that relationship and made that relationship, then they will just stick with them. If they're doing tents and multiple items, then they'll just order the balloons through them as well. Um, so it's fifty fifty. I have equal, and and when I'm working with the event planner on the nonprofit events. I respect that and I I'm very grateful for the event planners. I'm I'm working for them and not not necessarily my company. Mm -hmm. Um so white labeling it, so to speak. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, let's I'd like to talk a little bit more about the school events and then and then come back around to those nonprofits. 
So for the school events, um, someone who's who's really not acquainted with this kind of event, what what would they need to know about using balloons for a prom, a homecoming, or whatever? The I have not, as far as delivering balloons, I run into latex and no latex for certain schools. I have not run into the no latex for proms or homecoming events. Um, we work with generally a sponsor of the class that's producing the event. And then we also work with the activities director that the activities director is um, overseeing all the events. And so one particular one early in my career we had formed a relationship and I've probably done 10 homecoming dances for her at this point and it's it's just knowing how each school um, who's in charge of it at each school mm -hmm. and and would you say that um, that uh, there's any sort of area that um, that is typically focused on uh, more than other areas or uh, any trends that you've noticed in these type of events, similarities? I think the homecoming dances here in Florida have become just as big as prom. Um, I think that they're really, they're using the venues, you're using the stadiums, they're using, they're not using, I have one this year that's using their school to, to have their dance and the rest of them are using large um, spaces, the stadium, the hotel ballrooms for their events. Um, as far as trends go, I would say that homecoming is just becoming just as large as, as prom. Do you see any do you see any trends of theme or um, or areas that get decorated? I mean, do you find that that more often they want a grand entrance or more often they want dance floor decor or it's more centerpieces, uh, anything like that? Um, it's all, we generally do entrance and dance floor decor for, for most all of them. That's where we'll start. Um, this year we have a, a school that's doing a, a small balloon release after the court's announced. Um, that's different and during the actual halftime show for the game, not necessarily the dance. And then their um, themes, it's 50-50 as well. Some of the schools are using themes for their homecoming dances, and then the other portion are using um, their school colors and a traditional homecoming dance with their school colors. Um, some of the themes that we're using this year is... Um, Lights, they're just doing lights. Um, another one that we, I've never decorated before is um, a salute to our heroes, and they're doing a mix of um, superheroes as well as military police and firemen. So that was kind of different. I had never I had never even seen that theme before. And um, under the sea, that which is pretty traditional, but that's some of the latest ones we're doing. Nice. And, and over the course of your of your career, what would you say is the most popular um, school event theme? Hollywood. Hollywood. Hollywood red carpet would definitely be the, the school. And I will tell you, it's kind of interesting as far as balloons go, when the event, the activities director that we worked with for years some of the kids would come in, and, and sometimes I meet with the kids, sometimes I don't, but they would say, you know, we don't want balloons, we don't want balloons. And she would say, well, just wait and talk to her and see what she has to offer, and then maybe you'll change your mind. And then I come in and meet with them, and they're like, wow, we didn't know that you could do that. Or, and, and to meet with these sophomores and juniors in high school, and they weren't really sure what to expect, but they are always blown away and happy when it's finished. But they... We're like, we don't want balloons. And then they're happy. And and when you go in and you meet with them, you're showing them your book. Uh, what What is generally the process? Generally, I know their themes, so I come prepared with, with photographs that are going to best represent their theme or other themes with entrance decor that I can use for their theme. 
and presenting. Nowadays, it's digital pictures. I'll use my computer, iPad, and I still have my traditional portfolio that I'll bring and let them look through, but most of it's di digital these days. Nice. And um, what uh, would you say that there's any any um, challenges for these events? Uh, you mentioned that that you do need to be aware if it's a latex or no latex uh, venue or school. Are there any other challenges that you run into with this with the school events? No, actually, just this week I've kind of realized I met with one sponsor and only the sponsor and no kids, and I think that I enjoy meeting with the kids a little bit just so I can get what their vision is so that if the kids are happy, then the sponsors are happy, but this sponsor was kind of just leaving it up to us, and, and you really are kind of, you need a little bit more input as to what they're expecting. Hmm. So um, let's let's switch focus. Let's talk a little bit about those nonprofit events, and and especially let's talk about the nonprofit events that go through the planners. Um, so so first of all, if um, if you were talking to a planner who maybe was new or had never done a nonprofit event, and they were looking at using balloons for it, what what advice would you give them? A lot of our nonprofit work are races and runs, and so if that's the event that they're produ producing, I would definitely, you know, tell them the finish start or finish line arch because we do so many of those. Um, it's just kind of a no-brainer, and it's easy, and their client will love it and will expect it. Um, it's easy to brand their their um, nonprofit with balloons because it's easy to bring that color in and no matter where it is or what the event is you can add their brand to the event with balloons and um, do you find yourself doing also a lot of uh, a lot of galas or auctions I have had my hand yes we have done some not necessarily more for schools um, the private sector of schools we do do um, some balloons for them and um, for auction items, and yes, not necessarily for the event planners that I can think of, but we do do, we have experienced our auctions and galas. So most of the, most of the nonprofit events that you find yourself doing through, um, through the planners, it tends to be more of the, more of the races and, and the, those kind of large outdoor events then. Correct. We recently did one, and it was for our local YMCA, and they were um, led there. And it, this was the event production company that did it, and it was basically just at hors d'oeuvres. It wasn't a um, – it was maybe a rally for their supporters and their board, and they led their guest into this venue – and they led them through black pipe and drape with occasionally a colored sign. And at the end of the pipe and drape was this rainbow, and they gave me um, free reign to... So they eventually added color, so they were just showing how it was adding color um, to the event. So it was, it was really kind of neat. And so we were able to provide them with a tunnel of balloons that represented a rainbow, and it was an easy way for them to bring in... Um, they had a vision, and it was kind of interactive, and the, they went through the rainbow, and then they were in the venue where the event was taking place. And, and so what, um, what warnings or advice would you have for these planners, um, especially uh, using, using balloons outside? Uh, there in Florida, you come up with some very extreme weather conditions, right? Yes, we... We've learned um, we have very heavy base plates. We know how it's very important when you're hiring a balloon decorator to know and that they've had experience with outdoor decor because there's definitely a lot of um, mistakes that can happen. And wind, being wind and sun being our number one enemy against balloons, and you have to know how to do it right. And if it's and it can be done, so you just have to make sure you hire somebody that is prepared. And we have had extremely heavy base plates made that, that work. What challenges have you found yourself faced with um, while, while doing these events? 
we do have, um, going back to indoor events, we do have one venue here in Jacksonville, and it's our Prime Osborne Convention Center, and they do not allow balloons without signing a waiver. And if one balloon is in their rafters, I think the fee's $75 or $100. Or, so they're protecting their facility. And so I've developed a relationship. And um, this morning I did a trade show there, and they know that if there's not going to be a problem. But if you're working on an event and you're going to use balloons, you need to make sure that your venue is going to allow helium balloons. And when you're working with a professional decorator, they're going to know the ins and outs of the venues in the city that you're working with. And and uh, going going back to the uh, outdoor nonprofit events, what what other ways ha can balloons be used, or have you used balloons um, besides uh, besides the start finish line? Yeah, we um, this weekend we will be working with the American Heart Association, and they like to do a village, and their villages are colored, and they've got red, green, and yellow, and we will use balloons, um, large flying balloons, and then balloons inside each village that will represent that color, and one is community, and one is health, and so each one has a, and they've done this for years, but they've used balloons to to, to um, differentiate between the different villages. So that's one way, and it's um, a lot of balloons. Let's see. Um, tents. We'll decorate tents um, with stage decor because they're usually speaking, or um, American Cancer Society usually has a stage because they do a lot of long walks, and their, their relays, well, they'll have a stage, so we usually do some stage decor, some columns. And once again, those are going to be out there for a long period of time. You want to make sure they're weighted correctly. Um, sculptures. So um, at, at the time of this recording, we are, we are sitting on the edge of the helium cliff, the upcoming helium cliff. What, how, what percent of your work would you say is helium? And what, um, you know, if, if we do lose helium September 30th, um, what kind of backup plans do you have or what have you put in motion where you're at in case? I am, um, I know that we'll be okay if we do lose it. There's lots of alternatives and there's lots of um, great decor we can offer that's not. I, I will say I've cut back, but I still use a great deal of helium. I am probably 25% um, of my business is helium um, currently. Maybe a little bit more, but um, never. I haven't really thought of it. But I do know it's it's come down quite a bit. Hmm. Um. So so talking about um, <clears throat> excuse me, troubleshooting and thinking on your feet and contingency plans and things like that. Can you think of um, of, a, of maybe some of the times that you've had to improvise solutions to conditions or situations that you, that were unexpected? Certainly, there have been over the years. Um, you know, if the you just make it work. I mean, if you if there's a size and you need to, you, you just make it work, and that's kind of what we do, and that's why people hire us is because we're going to make it happen. If if we've they've ordered an eight foot, you know, ten foot column, and there's a nine foot ceiling, and we have to make it work, we're gonna we're gonna pull out a saw, you know, to fix that column. I don't. We we just make it work. I'm sure that things have happened, but off the top of my head. I'm not sure. Yeah, you just you just kind of deal with it as you go, huh? <laughs> Fix yeah. it and forget it. <laughs> yeah. So um, you did you did mention a little bit um, being aware of the venue and the restrictions of the venue. Um, can you elaborate some more on that? On on how venue choice might influence what kind of decor you do? Yes. Well, ceiling height is very important when you're working with balloons, especially if you're 
working with the dance because a low ceiling is going to prohibit what you're able to do. Um, we don't work with a lot of unions here in, in um, Jacksonville, but we do the convention center that I did mention, and they do actually homecoming dances there, and we sign the waiver and we can guarantee them that we are going to make sure that our balloons are safe, and um, we have not had an issue with it, and, and they know that, and so that helps. Um, knowing the venue as far as load in and load out is really important. You know, some of our hotels don't want us to, we, you've got to know their, the rules behind certain venues as far as getting in and out. Um, we're pretty lucky here in Florida as far as our venues. We're not really restricted in a great deal. Nice. Um, and and so also thinking uh, thinking about the uh, outdoor nonprofit events. Um, generally speaking, what would you say if you if you took all of your events and you averaged them? What would you say is is a normal setup, and what would you say is um, a normal normal budget and um, the amount of uh, setup time that you would need? You know, it just depends because you can go from one extreme to the other. You can put up an arch or you can have the extreme difference of the heart walk. And it's just what you're bringing to the event and the emotion that you're bringing because at the heart walk, when you it's on the river and when you walk in and see it, it the balloons add so much to the event, it's obvious there's something wow going on here. And... Um, there's some other walks that we do, and we're providing an arch, and it's still that wow experience, but it's not that this is almost an amusement park. There's so much going on. So th for the heart walk, we're going to arrive at 4 in the morning, and that will give us a three- or four-hour window to make sure everything is placed and set, and we'll begin inflating balloons tomorrow for it, and that it's a pretty large production. Um, the um, the smaller events, you know, will arrive an hour and a half before they want it completed just to make sure we don't run into any bumps and then we're, um, you know, we'll have an arch up in 45 minutes to an hour and helium arch and we're on our way. Nice. So it's extreme. It's just a matter of their budget. And and how and what they're trying to accomplish with balloons. But if you had to like mush them all together and take an average, um, what would your average uh, on-site setup time be? I would say an hour and a half. I mean, as far as an arch and a few columns, maybe a little bit longer to be safe, but a cup, you know, let's say two hours. And. How big are most of the um, finish line arches? How large are they? They are, I would say 20, uh, about 50 feet, 50 linear feet. Wow. Wow, or so going, going over a roadway, huh? Correct, yes. Wow, that's, that's big. So let's... um. Let's talk a little bit, or actually, well, before I get off the, the topic of the, um, the events, both nonprofit and, and school events, is there anything you'd like to add on that topic? I don't think so. No. Okay, and um, so now let's talk a little bit more in general about uh, planners working with balloon artists and balloon companies. So in the first place, what would you say, how could a planner tell the difference between a good balloon artist and a bad one. I mean, other than obviously working with them and having a disaster on their hands. But when they're in the planning stages, how could they figure out the difference? Just knowing the right questions to ask. I get a million phone calls a day asking how much is an arch and, and you know, they need to go down. Is it indoors or outdoors? Is it, um, you know, what size is it going to be? And you, you have to, the, event, the balloon artist needs to be able to ask you the correct questions so that they can give you a proposal that will 
um, fit to the needs for your event. So it's just a matter of experience of work of doing it for so many years of knowing you know what is the best balloon decor that's going to work for your event. Are there any questions that a planner could ask um, their potential uh, balloon company to help them figure out the you know what what kind of quality work they might do? Um, I would definitely, if it's an outdoor event, you know, question how they're going to weight the decor that they are ordering to make sure that it is um, weighted properly. Um, very important because that's probably the biggest disaster you could you could have for an outdoor event is wind and not being in. We are surrounded with water and wind here in Jacksonville and. It doesn't take much for a balloon to, to blow, and I always make sure everybody understands that. Um, How heavy are your base plates? Oh, I wish I knew. I don't know. They're heavy. They're heavy. So we have some that we can't even move. We're like, why did we even have these made? Like, they're, they're so big and heavy. I mean, but we do. They're, they're pretty. They're, I'll have to put one on a scale for you. <laughs> um... The we have an event coming up that I've never experienced before um, in all these years, and it is an indoor event, and it has to be all foil because one of their employees is a latex um, has a latex allergy, and they don't is what they're saying, and um, it is. And it's they're getting quite a bit of decor, so it'll be really interesting to see it all come together, all foil balloons. And they're really excited, and they really, really wanted balloons. And the pictures I showed them was a walkthrough star made with latex, but they needed it with foil. So it'll be interesting to see it come together. And they're really excited about it. And it's through an event planner, so I had to educate the event planner and make sure she understood that her customer knew that it wasn't going to look anything like the pictures that she had seen. And so, as and they were, and the event planner was very appreciative of me communicating to her so that she could go back. And there were no, there's going to be no surprises this coming week. Well, I can't wait to see those pictures. I bet it's going to look fantastic. Let's see. So, um, what what other questions do you think uh, an event planner could should should ask of their balloon person, or what other things do you think that they should do to research their potential balloon company to um, to know whether they're comparing apples to apples. I mean, it doesn't always come down to cheapest is best, right? Uh, I mean, uh, what should they look for? Right. Well, it it doesn't help to you know to see if they're certified balloon artists. That could be one credential that they could look for. Look at their portfolio, their clients, to see um, who they who has trusted them with their events and if if it was um, successful. Um, obviously, a website questions. Um, how early do you arrive? Um, what is your, you know, I like to be finished. I don't like to, to take it to the right before the event. I'm looking at at least an hour before the event starts just in case we run into any problems. I don't like to rush in and make sure that, um, to make sure we have enough time. Um, and so to find out what time, how much leadway they give before their event. I like to, I like a window, but I like that window to um, end about an hour before the event starts. Nice. Um, so what do you think every planner should know in order to get the best results from their balloon company? So they've already picked a balloon company. Is there anything that would be useful for them to know for best results? Um, for, to to know, um, or or is there anything that you would say that just in general every planner should know about balloons? It, when used properly, and they there's a million things that you can do with balloons. They can create that emotion, like we talked about earlier. They can um, with a certain sculpture or a certain um, design. They can bring your corporate colors into an area or an event. Um, they are a great 
um, resource to have. And um, trade shows are outstanding for balloons. You can add height to your booth with um, helium balloons. Um, they, they're no longer a balloon on a string. That was years and years and years ago. And there's the possibilities with balloons are absolutely endless. People are wearing them. I mean, they've changed. Nice. And that's probably the number one thing that they need to know is that you could build a house with balloons. I mean, you could probably, you could do anything that you wanted, honestly, out of balloons. The possibilities are absolutely endless. So, um, what would you, if you were to uh, pick your absolute dream event or, or the, the dream planner to work with, what would you want besides an unlimited budget? Clear direction. Clear direction. It's very important to be able to um, listen as a balloon um, that's also that's something that goes back to your last question. It's very important that your balloon decorator listens to you um, and, and is open to your ideas and is willing to um, help your vision come to life. So listening is very important. Um, I, I want somebody that's able to communicate with me what they want and what their customer wants. Um, and if they need help with that, I'm willing to help them. Um, so that their expectations, so that I can meet their expectations. I don't want to have to read their mind. Um, I can present them with creative ideas if that's the route that we want to go, but just let me know um, what you're looking to do with the balloons. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, give, me, give me five do's or don'ts for planners who are thinking of working with balloons or with balloon people. Um, order early. Give your um, balloon decorator enough time to uh, prepare and prep for your event and to um, make sure that everything is ordered and um, to have plenty of time. That's very helpful and um, it's very um, to, that, so that's definitely a do is to early or, or you could do that a do or a don't. Don't order late. Um, and, and unfortunately, that's probably the thing that happens th that happens the most to me is they know I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make it happen for them, and I'm not gonna tell them no, and they're gonna call me last minute. So call early. Um, what are some other? Um, make sure you. I've had this happen, and this could also be what my nightmare back from one of the first questions you asked me, and it was with an event planner, and it happened this past spring, and they wanted all pastel balloons, and we were doing this these big string of pearl canopies, just individuals over this great big room, and it was near Easter, and that's what he ordered, but his client was expecting more of a fashion tone of colors and not the pastel colors that looked a little bit more maybe baby shower and so listen to your don't assume the colors make sure whenever because I'm I then was the middleman and so it was hard and there was really nothing we could do about it but um, I did exactly what the event planner had asked me to do so listen to your customer make sure you have that its color is important and make sure that you have there's probably what five shades of pink or you know there's a, nowadays there's more and more colors out there so you've got to get the right shade so make sure you um, find out the correct color it seems kind of crazy and you would assume that you would have it nailed down but it doesn't always happen um, that's two Got a little ways to go. Okay, yeah, that's oh. right. You can you can send them later. Um, I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot, so it's all right. Um, so so you kind of meant kind of touched on my next question too, um, which is I'd like to know your best and worst experiences working with planners. 
That would definitely be probably the worst because it was we knew that she wasn't happy and he had left to go somewhere. Um, they don't always they're not always on site, but I knew that it wasn't. I knew that it really wasn't my place to try to talk it out. But we were like, you know, do we run back to the warehouse and start all over? You know, at what point? What do we do? So that would definitely be the worst. Um, it's always great um, with social media seeing them promote the balloons on their sites. Um, you know, not I think you said white label, not necessarily getting the credit for it, but we know that they're proud of it, and so that they have posted it on their site, and that's completely fine with me because I know they're going to sell it, and um, I'm going to be the one that um, produces it. So that's kind of exciting. Nice. And do you have, um, off the top of your, your mind, do you have, um, you know, just like like the experience that you look back on uh, working with the planner that, you know, this was the coolest one or this was just like everything clicked, you know, one of those? Um, you know, we did. This was kind of, a, it was kind of hard too. And these this is the thing with working with planners as well. A lot of them have these incredible ideas and visions, and they're often very hard to, um, they're not always um, feasible. And we, I think it was between 800 and 1,000 balloons that they wanted um, in a pool, a screened in pool area. And they wanted LED lights in them. So that was quite a challenge because L balloons with LED lights and it don't float, the float time is reduced greatly. And so, but when it was all said and done and this whole entire pool canopy was lit with balloons, it was pretty, it was pretty amazing to sit back and say, wow, this is really cool. And for them to think we're going to sell this and they've sold it more than once. Um, so that was, that was pretty exciting to see. Well, do they, do they get a good picture of that one? They did. My pictures are not great because it was really hard to get that lighting. I mean, it was really, really hard. Um, I need to look and see on their pages to see, but it, I, I need more pictures of that event because it was it's, it was really impressive. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's hard to get pictures of the lighting effects, but they, they do so much when you add it to the lens. They do, yeah. It was, it was wow. It was a big wow. Um, it was all, we've, um, you probably have had it a lot out in California, but we were um, able to work with Viacom for when the Super Bowl was here in Jacksonville, and that was exciting anytime you're involved with the Super Bowl, and what we did was so silly, but um, they wanted, they, we did some custom imprint balloons, and they had me hang, and this is, I don't even know what year it was here, but it was years ago, and it would probably be done different now, but we had glow sticks coming down the balloon, um, String because they, when they came out of the Super Bowl, they wanted people to know where their buses were for their clients to get back on. And so we flew these Viacom balloons, and so we delivered them at halftime at the Super Bowl. So that was exciting um, to go down and to be you know a little bit in the action. Wow, neat. Um, neat. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us uh, before I close up? Before we finish up here. Anything no, I've forgotten to ask or that you're just, you know, really dying to get out? No, I think that, um, I think you can do a lot with balloons, and I think that um, there's still a lot of growth, and it's still amazing how many people have yet to use them um, in their event, and that I think that there's a lot that we can still do, and, and that the industry and that the, the world can do with them. I mean, it's grown a lot, but there's still a lot of a lot of event planners out there. And I will go back and tell you one more thing with working with event planners. And I was going to do it this summer, and I haven't done it. But this one big production company, they they have a decent amount, let's say six, possibly more event planners. And occasionally they'll have a turnover, but I have to educate them. They have to know what to sell. So the event um, planner needs to know to ask the the balloon designer or the balloon decorator, hey, what um, what are some things that you can, you know, communicate? They need to have that dialogue and that communication because if the event planner doesn't know what to sell, um, then they're not going to sell it. They have to have examples and know. So when we have new event planners come in, 
I have to email them pictures. I have to um, make sure that they can see because they are green. They're brand new. I mean, they they're not necessarily familiar with what's out there. So um, whether you're an event planner or a balloon decorator, you have to be able to um, communicate with one another as to um, what's out there, and you can't assume that they know. You think that okay, they're they would know, but they don't. So, so that that's an interesting point. So if if there's somebody who's a brand new event planner and they're just starting they, maybe they don't even have an event that's coming up but they're just trying to get their decks in order you know have their their vendor Rolodex ready um, would you would you recommend then that they maybe contact a couple of balloon companies and say hey send us some of your best designs so that we know what kinds of things we should call we could call on you for or is there some sort of advice that you might have for that brand new green event planner Yes, absolutely. Yeah, just just see what's out there. No, that event like in the one particular company, they their customers are extremely broad. I mean, they they work with every customer imaginable, from social events to um, you know huge corporate events. But they, um, if they don't know what's out there, they I would definitely say to interview possible decorators, look at their websites, ask for um, photographs. I would definitely recommend them doing that because I promise you they will be wild. And and the other thing is, I will add this part, is the decor and it's and it's kind of funny, but when the production company gets really overwhelmed and they've got so much work, they're gonna start selling balloons because they know I'm gonna do it and it's something they don't even have to think about. It's, it's actually kind of, it works for me, but I know that that's what, they have a lot of props and decor, but when they're thin and they can't do it, they're going to start selling balloons for that day because they know they're going to sub it out to me. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Great. Well, Blended, thank you so much for coming and joining us. And um, before we before we log off real quick, if you would just remind everybody uh, your, your company name and your website and where they can find you. Okay, I'm Blenda Barrier, and we are located in North Florida, in Jacksonville, Florida, and we are the Balloon and Event Construction Company. And our website is balloonandevents.com. Great. Well, thank you again, and thank you guys all uh, in the audience there for joining us. And thank you. Uh, until the next time, have a great night or day. Thank you. Okay, stay on. <laughs>